check the integration of this. Um, I did the initial challenge um, to use the, the initial square footage of the program, namely the third floor, and uh, investigate what can be done, what can I resolve, if I can propose some solutions that can work for the institution, and then see where that can go. Um, it's uh, one of the first time, it's the first time in my life that I touched on um, black culture in general. It was a term that um, I am not sure how comfortable I was with it. I felt at times it was overgeneralizing. So, so um, I got attracted to studying uh, different cultures of Africa and uh, see uh, how very interesting how very interesting relationships they had with uh, space and with their own identity. Visiting Ifitayo, um, affirmation was a, a strong word that they kept using as a, as a motivation. Uh, they wanted to be um, the one, the children, to affirm themselves in this space. Um, so what I came across is that the Zulu tribe, uh, whenever, wherever, and whenever they congregated, they would draw a circle on the ground and that would designate their area. So this was interesting to me because it at the same time had a combined a, a cultural regime, um, it combined the affirmation of identity and um, also had a very strong spatial character. Mm -hmm. So then I had to create a project because theory was beautiful and studying the project was interesting. So I went ahead and uh, started studying the site and uh, see what are the lines that I can work with, uh, what are the limitations. I was using only one floor. I have to declare here that it's been pretty scary the first couple of weeks. Um, but I, I embraced fear and uh, kept moving. Um, so I, I wanted to study the lines that exist there, what spaces can I create without creating too many uh, residual spaces. That's something that I had to sacrifice. Uh, I did not have that big of a luxury. Um, so uh, I was very uh, satisfied on Friday morning when I realized that given the, the different lines that the site provides, I can have a perfect circle almost in the center of the space. Aha, I said let's move forward. Um, so um, the studies of the, of the space and the spatial dynamics um, um, demanded um, that uh, most of the walls, or at least the biggest portion of the walls, were uh, transformable, they were movable, so that I can have a bigger flexibility of, of spaces. Um, not a, a space can be, I wanted to make spaces be more than just one space, so that you can almost triple the program. Um, a quick walkthrough uh, to the space. Um, I created uh, I, uh, I created additional space, um, I talked with my professor and we, uh, we were able to uh, order a smaller elevator and uh, this uh, gave us the... Yes! <laughs> so practicality and concept. Um, budget. So uh, this uh, gave us the... Uh, and budget, yes. yes. <laughs> a board member. And a banker. <laughs> um, so this gave us uh, uh, the opportunity to create a small uh, empty space before you enter the space that can help you prepare for the experience. Um, walking into the space, this, uh, this area where the circle is, is uh, the reception area that, else, that can also transform into the Ambangi area. Um, as we visited Ifitalia, we saw that the assembly area, the first area, was very narrow and many parents would arrive at the same time. And it, it would give a challenge to uh, easily circulate in, especially when children de uh, demand more space themselves. Um, so uh, I wanted to be as generous as possible for the first area that they arrived to and give a good uh, dose, uh, dose of storage for coats and bags and everything to go on before you move on to your activity. Um, at this point, I'm going to take a couple steps back. Um, I mentioned that. Um, the, the Zulu Circle uh, was the main driving force for the, uh, 
for the, the, the spatial um, the, the spatial creation. Um, studying the that regime, regime itself, um, drawing the circle on the floor, I found out that it actually is has more spatial character. It comes from the construct of the Zulu hut, which was round um, after the Europe, European invasion. Square spaces and angle spaces entered the the African culture, but the Zulu kept drawing the circle on the ground, reminiscing of their uh, circular huts. So, um, studying the hut, um, I uh, I wanted uh, to uh, to create uh, skylights on the top um, that would have circular skylights that can provide uh, natural light to all of the classroom. And um, the way the light would enter the space would uh, resemble uh, a Zulu hut. So the light would create a circle on the ground, now, not unlike the departure point of the concept. And at the same time, all the students and all the functions would enjoy natural light and gazes up to the sky. Um, those uh, skylights um, evolved to uh, also be benches above, so uh, parents can sit on the rooftop and gaze at the activities going down with uh, of their children, but, and also can have an extra playground on top of for the children. But we're going to talk about the rooftop in a second. Um, so wherever you see the circles here, these are the skylights that that are from above. Um, going to your right, this is uh, the area that I designated for administration. This has the least um, trans uh, transformable walls. Um, but uh, I try to incorporate uh, as many of the program requirements that the client asked. Um, two conference uh, spaces, one open, one closed. The open space can also act as a lounge area, two closed offices, and then six um, open plan uh, workstations. Um, Wherever I could find uh, the chance, I wanted to create uh, storage opportunities. And uh, at this diagram, the blue shaded areas are where storage is located. Um, uh, what was I going to say? And um, I also gave uh, all the toilets are ADA um, compliant. So that's where I wanted to splurge. That's where I wanted to use more space. I wanted to create. Uh, where I was more uh, generous with space and wanted to have a strong programmatic reason. And that being the case, I wanted to create um, all the toilets to be um, wheelchair accessible so that even if a professor, a visitor, or a person who would attend an event um, is in a wheelchair, they would not feel excluded. They would, they would feel that they're part of the space. And um, speaking of being part of the space, engagement was another big driving force that um, that uh, drove the, the concept development. Um, I wanted the children and the people who uh, were um, at the who were enjoying the Ifitayo experience to be engaged with the space, not only with the experience, so that the space can also become an additional character. Um, <clears throat> back to the transformable walls. Um, this uh, this area is designated for uh, classrooms, and it's a, it's going to be carpeted. And this area is designated for studios. The dashed walls can be retracted to the back in those um, storage areas. So you can have a variety of combinations of sizes of rooms and classrooms. You can have three uh, well-sized studios. You can have a fairly uh, big studio and then uh, another studio. And the same goes with the classroom. So again, flexibility was an important factor. And also, at uh, every combination, you definitely have at least one source of natural light coming into it. Um, in addition to the windows, um, and also stores opportunities. Um, the uh, the studios uh, are going to the flooring. The general flooring is going to be terrazzo, um, which is sustainable. It's uh, inexpensive, and uh, it comes in a variety of colors. So there is a possibility of creating a more child-friendly aesthetic environment, and that also is economical. Um, and uh, that is because. Uh, the, the classrooms can be used for the bombadrums that would require uh, a carpet and uh, the students, general studios that we would be uh, naked throughout the flooring can uh, accommodate other classrooms. Um, another big issue uh, was uh, furniture. Um, how does a classroom become a studio that requires an open floor? Where does all this furniture go given the fact that we're already very limited with space? Uh, so I went back to my research uh, at this point for, uh, for the African culture, and um, I ran across the Akuaba doll. Um, it's a doll that pregnant women would um, carry around as a lucky charm almost, as a protector. 
And um, the interesting fact about this doll is that um, it's designed, uh, the, the human body is abstracted and exaggerated at the same time, which is very strong characteristics of African um, art. Um, uh -huh, I said again, um, that's a very interesting uh, thing to incorporate. And then I also thought about um, affirmation. So how can I create a symbol of you know, the people who are in the Fatayo and that can also be useful? And uh, speaking about useful, another big uh, part of African culture is utility and beauty. Whatever is useful is also beautiful. Whatever is beautiful is also useful. Art and life are not divided. Um, so having these two notions in my head and also the issue that where does all the furniture go? Um, I designed a system um, of, uh, of tables and, and stools. Um, the tables and the stools uh, can go to the wall. They can uh, be stored uh, in the wall, and when they are stored in the wall, they resemble uh, an aqua bottle and an uh, abstracted uh, human form. Um, they, uh, they aim to symbolize the people who are taking part in the Ifetaju experience. And uh, what happens is, when the students arrive in the classroom, they take out the parts of the furniture, they, they assemble them themselves. So they're very engaged with the space and its functions, and that can educate them to take care of the space more. Uh, but at the same time, uh, this wall is providing a visual um, interest and uh, a very strong programmatic feature to be able to uh, create, uh, make the space even more flexible. Um, then another big issue about the, the space uh, were the musical instruments. Um, visiting the space, uh, we found out that um, the storage for the musical instruments were, was too far away from the classrooms and teachers and students had to drag them around. Um, so uh, one of my biggest uh, aims was to bring uh, musical instrument storage uh, closer to the studios and um, thinking about utility and beauty again and affirmation of uh, identity, I created uh, a storage uh, a transparent storage unit close to the studios, right here, where the, where the, um, with a skylight on top to be naturally lit, where the musical instruments can be placed. Um, entering the space, you see a pattern of instruments of uh, African descent and more modern instruments at the same time. You can also see the people walking behind them, people taking them down, people putting them up. So you have a, almost an interactive pattern going on, which has a lot to do with uh, affirmation exposing your identity, not unlike the Zulu did when they met, but also it helps the space be more flexible, having the instruments closer, and uh, gives uh, more power to the concept of engagement in the space. Uh, children can are going to take more care about their instrument of how it looks on the shelf if they know that their parents or their friends are going to see it. Did I leave something out? Yeah. <laughs> okay, two more things. <laughs> Two more things, sorry. Uh, um, here are some uh, three uh, important diagrams to show how, this, uh, how the place can transform. Um, when the walls are all um, retracted back, um, you, uh, you can enjoy two very big um, areas. Um, this storage system is studied to be on rails, so it can also be railed back to the storage unit. And then this space becomes a stage, a big stage for um, events that Ifetaju can host. Um, at the same time, this space can fully open up, so you can have a, a stage here and then a reception space here. Um, I was very happy when I arrived at the solution because it sounds like a very five-star solution for a program that's very limited. And um, as we were informed, Ifetaju is really reaching out to uh, be more uh, extrovert about their practice. And uh, I think it's going to be useful to have a decent and generous space to uh, host people when they get sponsors. Um, and then, last but not least, um, the, uh, uh, the Mbongi uh, was another important factor that uh, had to be integrated with the creation space. Um, and um, that's where my color studies came by. I, since the beginning, I was looking into African art and art that reminds me of African art. Keith Haring has nothing to do with Africa, in decent. But if he, someone notices his art, they can see a very strong influence uh, from the Andy Belli tribe and in general. Um, I looked into Jean Michel Basquiat and then, of course, the Andy Belli tribe designs. Uh, and I tried to abstract palettes and, uh, and patterns. 
So uh, in order to create uh, a, an Mbongi space, um, I saw the Mbongi space as the center of the space. Um, if I would see the, the whole site as a body of the Ifitaio experience, that would be the heart of it. So I thought that a good space to put this would be the, the circle in the center, uh, again linking back to the Zulu circle. And um, also linking to the Zulu hut, I, I, the way I envisioned it was um, for uh, linking to the skylight from above, uh, four curved uh, uh, beams can host a uh, transparent fabric that can come down and enclose the space and uh, create an intimate experience in the center of the space, having the light coming down. Um, the light will symbolize the one pole of the Zulu hut, that's the way it's created. It has one central um, structure. And uh, this can also become, this, this circle by the way is a uh, 14, 14 feet radius. So it can also be a small event space. When classrooms are going all around, this can be a small congregation space or event space. And uh, so um, what I studied was that this space can come down, can pull down. It can be semi, uh, semi pull down. Um, the, I'm thinking that the panels can have uh, three stops from, um, in the, as they go down or not. They, it, can, it has the possibility to create a corridor for the stage so if you have the two side parts fully down, you can have a, a more uh, visual corridor to go to the, to the event here. So it can be a very, uh, again, engaging um, instrument in the Ifitaio experience and at the same time accommodating uh, an integral, integral part of the program. And uh, to sum up, um, the way the skylights are um, arranged, skylight benches are arranged, um, creates an interesting uh, an interesting space in the roof. Um, the roof can also be uh, useful for uh, outdoors events when the weather is better. Um, there is a there is ample uh, there is general space in the center, the safe part of the roof, for the children to play. They can have their own playground. There is a an astounding view to the Prospect Park this way, and uh, I created a small uh, glass cubicle that is uh, flat, uh, that is uh, 12 foot high. So uh, people can go there and enjoy the view. And then um, I thought of the benches the, uh, as an additional fence to be encouraged to stay more towards the center. Uh, but then I thought I, I could challenge this and bring it even more forward. And um, the, the final iteration is that, the, that behind the benches I would put uh, greeneries uh, specifically studied to uh, withhold uh, rainwater uh, that can be filtered down and at the same time, it can also work as insulation for the classes below because we all know that we can have very hot summers here. Um, so this can bring down the air conditioning bill. And at the same time, the children are going to be enjoying their playtime at a more green area as an extension to the Prospect Park, which is a less safe area to play. Uh, give you some insight on sort of your courageousness. Well, first of all, for someone starting out saying, you know, I knew very little about black culture and so intimidating. I thought that you conceptually were very strong at trying to connect this research that you did to the way in which the space is used and how users are going to engage with it. Everything from how you get your furniture and your equipment and all that. So I said that you did a really amazing job with that. I think that you know you were bold and you really retreated, and I think there could have been some opportunities uh, to incorporate this. So I love the idea of this, the, the inspiration of the hut and creating these white wells that sort of shine in. I think architecturally, what you may have been able to do, since you're you know interrupting the roof, is that you know how could you make those deeper? Like how could you see part of that hut yeah. form? descend into the space a little bit or how and in doing that so imagine that twice as deep and that these the ceiling plane kind of slopes too right so now all of a sudden i'm feeling a little bit more of that hut form yeah and that, but i love how dramatic having that sort of wall of light yeah. and then the same thing here like they're all the same shape and they really look mm -hmm. linear how might the the skylight have not been a bubble but the actual hut form, or the monkey form kind of coming up and they could have been different heights, right? You know, how could you play with, because sitting up there in the summer, it's hot, yeah. right? So how could you play with screens that sort of followed the form oh, of the hut, that could have been trellised, so you could incorporate more green things. 
So I, I feel like conceptually it's all there, and then architecturally, maybe you were treated just a little too much. Right. But I think that there, there are definitely ways, because I walked around and saw this one, and this really stood out to me, that you picked those forms. And then I was trying to find them in your architecture. Yeah. And I think there are some places where you could have uh, elaborated on that a little bit. You're right, I agree. There's a lot of potential. And uh, I have to declare that I've been pretty obsessive about this project. I've been excited that I'm working on it. It's been uh, stimulating to work with uh, a concept that I had never worked before, black uh -huh. culture. Uh -huh. um, and also, it's been very interesting working for a community envisioning that this design is not just going to stay in my renders on my computer, but it might actually help people's lives. It's, mm -hmm. It gives me goosebumps every time. It's, uh, it's, it's interesting. It's really um, inspired. It really came Yeah. Yeah. It's so, true. and I agree there's a lot of potential, and I, I, I promise to keep thinking about it. <laughs>